Will Prowse gets it. So why high voltage and why now? Let's go through a few reasons. Less current, less heating, smaller copper, higher inverter efficiency at load, easier to scale to tens of kilowatts, and the list just keeps going on and on. I've done a lot of stress testing on these Solus high voltage inverters. I've got three all together right now. I think I have over 50 videos on the Solus S6 line now, ranging from how to set up and configure for off-grid, grid tie, with and without batteries, configuring a microgrid, how to parallel them, even how to run them off a Nissan Leaf battery. I have three 11.4s, like I said now. The one out in the shed's leading a pretty hard life. <laughs> I like to say it's under a perpetual stress test. Every day it's just running Bitcoin miners. As long as there's enough sun, it's running 10 or 11 kilowatts all the time. I think it's been running on my automation over 10 months now. The miners start up automatically in the morning when the SOC preset is hit and stop in the evening when the low preset is hit. Now, in Will's video, he showed the Goodwee 11.4 kilowatt hybrid inverter paired with an LFP battery pack. His takeaway was silence, ease of install, and overall refinement. There's been some good deals on Goodwee inverters recently on the secondary market because of some solar install companies going bankrupt. Why would you choose a high voltage system over a 48 volt system for your home or even off grid? Well, first thing would be wiring runs and copper gauge. Instead of massive and expensive 4 aught cable, we can run normal number 6 or number 4 THHN that you can get at Home Depot. As for the batteries, most manufacturers are going to uh, stacked cells now. And with those, you just have packs that you set on top of each other. When you set it down on top, it automatically makes the connection versus big parallel 48 volt bank with massive cables. <laughs> There's been some misconception also about the, the battery packs. Uh, people think that you're, you're tied to one manufacturer's battery packs. That's just not true. Like the Solus here, I think they have something like 10 different manufacturer battery packs that you can use. Or you can go the DIY route with an EV battery pack. That's probably the most cost effective method. I have, so far I've got two Nissan Leaf 24 kilowatt hour batteries that I pulled out of some, some scrap Nissan Leafs. I bought at Copart. I paid like $1,200 a piece for the cars. I pulled the whole battery out. There's a bunch of extra components too you can sell off like the the motor, you can sell the charger, you can sell the inverter, and basically you end up with a free battery if you go that route. Then you just, you take the battery and connect a, a little controller board to it and a few relays, a little bit of wiring and, and you, you've got a 24 kilowatt hour battery. There's guys using 100 kilowatt Tesla batteries. Just about any EV battery can be used now. I'll put a link to Dalla's GitHub site in the description so you can go check it out. The inverter choices that we have in the US, it's not real big, but it's getting better every year. We have uh, the, main, the main brands are Solus, Fronius, Goodwee, uh, SMA, Fox ESS. Now, I'm sure I'm missing a couple, but those, those are the major ones. They're not new technology, it's just that the US is catching up to the rest of the world. Right now, the majority of the um, high voltage systems are running between 350 and 400 volts, but there's some higher voltage stuff coming up. I've seen 600 volt battery packs, 1000 volt PV inputs. So things are, going, things are going higher, they're not going the opposite way. Also, this is pretty cool. Solus is gonna be releasing a 20 to 50 kilowatt series of S6 inverters to the US market this year. Uh, they're going to be three phase, but for bigger installs, it's going to be pretty interesting. And they can be they can be split out for single phase too, so you can you can run all your single phase stuff off of them. But it's going to be especially interesting to the Bitcoin miners out there because a lot of, a lot of the new mining equipment coming out is all three phase, all the hydro equipment, all the bigger air cooled equipment too is is all three phase now. So that, that should be pretty interesting. And then even EG4 is getting into the high voltage game. The 100 volt architecture, I may have some, some, some new uh, some Easter eggs coming for that because okay. there's a lot more you can do with a, with a higher voltage DC platform. 48's just tricky, it has too many amps and it's low sure. efficiency. Yeah. Well, semi-high voltage, they're, 
doing, I think, a 100 or 120 volt battery pack. They're dipping their toes in the water, I guess. But it, it should be a pretty interesting system. And there's been a few signature solar amp up videos that have featured high voltage. I think everybody's starting to catch on how good the high voltage systems are. This high voltage game is starting to pick up. I would say if you're planning a new whole home or an off-grid system, I would definitely put a high voltage system on the table. All right, guys, hope you found this interesting. If you did, I sure would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And leave some kind of a comment in the, uh, in the comments because I don't know what's going on with YouTube lately, but my views are drastically down. I know my, I know my videos aren't cinematic quality, but I mean, it's getting a little ridiculous with like double digit, low double digit views. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but I think if you put some kind of a comment, even if it's just an emoji or something, I think that'll, that'll kick the algorithm up. All right. I appreciate you guys. Adios.